Welcome to another episode of me complaining about technology that I don't like. In this episode, I have some computers here. You'll see that on the right, so, well, okay. Here's what I'm going to do this video on. This is my ThinkPad, my ThinkPad X220. Now, if you're on the internet, and you're using computers and you pray, you claim to be a pro, you gotta use a ThinkPad. It's almost a meme, but in this video, I'm gonna explain why, why it's not just a meme. There are actually reasons to use one of these, not, not just a ThinkPad, but specifically an older one, although the new ones are sort of okay. Here, we have a better computer. If you look at the specs, this computer is better. This is an HP uh, ProBook. 450G6. I don't know if anyone cares about any of those numbers, but that's what it is. I got this from work. This is my work-issued computer, um, and it is such an annoyance for many different reasons, and I want to I talk about some reasons why. Now, some of these are going to be specific to just Linux users, but let's, let's start by flipping these things over. Oh, there's my name. Um, so, first off, one thing I wanted to do is you know, I like using Linux, of course, and I usually like, um, you know, I'm not, I don't want to, there's probably some rule about me deleting the operating system in this machine, so I didn't do it, but I did want to open it up and replace the hard drive. So I put in, I, well, I think the main hard drive is actually on MSATA. So I wanted to put in uh, a, my, one of my solid state drives in here so I could run Linux on it and I could boot from that. You might think that that's a simple thing to do, but it isn't. It would be a simple thing to do on this ThinkPad. What I would do is, there's a little screw here, this little thing comes off, you put the hard drive in, you replace you know, whatever's in there before, and that's all you have to do. You now have a, a, uh, you know, a hard drive in this computer. Now, in order to do it on this one, you gotta get this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw, that, you know, typical stuff. You gotta take the whole panel off, and then if you open this up, I'm not gonna do it now because it's such a pain, but I'll describe how it is. There's a battery here, the hard drive is supposed to go here. In order to get the hard drive out, I think you have to actually remove the battery too, which is very delicate, of course. You know, you, you've got to be careful with everything. And, of course, the annoying thing, one of the annoying things about this is, well, one of the good things about a ThinkPad, to take out a battery, you know, you basically just unhook it here. I can't really do it with one hand because I'm holding the camera with the other, but you nearly could do it with one hand. The battery is right here. And there are a couple advantages to that. I want you to think about the advantages of having a battery you can just pull off. You know, it just has a couple protective latches on it. Um, sometimes, every once in a while, something that happens is you have static problems, okay? And your computer, sh it has a static, you know, there's something electrical. A lot of times this happens in the winter. Um, and your computer will not boot or shut down properly. An easy way to fix that on a computer like this is you just pull out the battery. Now, it's the same way in cell phones. It used to be you could easily take out a cell phone battery, but now, basically to annoy you and to get you to have to fix things more often or, or go into the store to fix things, they make it more difficult to do that. And the same things here. Our battery, now, this is supposed the rationalization for this is, oh, look how sleek this is. Look how, oh, nasty this is. Look at all these scary ports and stuff like that. But in reality, taking out the battery is a nice and simple thing here. It's a difficult thing here. And when, in order to take, here's the catch-22 of a computer like this. In order to get to the battery, you have to open it up. You have to have the motherboard all in front of you. So what happens if it is, you know, you, you get this case off, and you're looking at the battery, you want to take it out, and it's winter, and there's static all over the place, and you go to reach to take it out, and static goes between your hand and the motherboard. Well, game over, man. In here, you never have this problem. Before you open up anything, you can easily take the battery off. There's no problem whatsoever. So anyway, so you have to do that. You have to be careful about static. You have to remove the battery. And then you can get to the hard drive. And that's what I did. I, I put the hard drive in, and it wasn't too difficult. Um, uh, and it's in there now. Well, I mean, it wasn't too difficult after I did all that other junk. Uh, but of course, the problems do not end there, okay? Obviously. Now, one other thing. Now, a couple months ago, or I guess maybe a year or so ago, I did a video on installing Arch Linux, okay? And one thing I said in that video that caused some controversy is that I said that I'm very much against, um, I'm very much against UEFI. Uh, or I'm not really against it. I just, if I have the choice, I will not use UEFI. I will use traditional booting methods to boot into Linux. 
Now, the reason a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, UAFI is the new thing. Why don't you just use that? Why, don't you, why do you want to be an old boomer and use the old way of booting? Because there are advantages to UAFI. But the annoying thing about it is that with the rise of UEFI, you have this stuff like Secure Boot and all these other things that basically amount to making it difficult for you to boot into Linux. Now again, the rationalization is, oh, we're just making it more secure for normies out there who might plug drives in their computer that can be booted from, and then you could exploit them in some way. Now first off, that I, I don't think that ever really happened that often. Um, it, it'd be sort of hard to fool someone with a trick like that. Uh, but, you know, even if that's the case, Secure Boot, well, once I, I finally got, of course, my operating system in here, um, in order, or my hard drive in here, in order to boot into the operating system was a huge pain. These new UEF, uh, new computers that have UEFI and might not even have traditional BIOS, they may, might make it really hard to get traditional BIOS. It basically, you have to go to, through all these settings. Sometimes you cannot do it if, you know, your, your BIOS is locked. But I, I almost expected this to be that way um, because, you know, this is uh, issued by my employer. Thankfully, my employer, they're all a bunch of boomers, so they don't exactly know how to lock all that stuff down. But it can be done with UEFI. can't really be done with uh, traditional BIOS. Um, so that's one of the reasons I really hate UEFI. Yes, there are advantages. Yes, people in the comments will tell me the advantages. I know them, but I will just say, install using Linux with UEFI is such a pain, and UEFI is designed to be that way. That's the way I do not like. That, that's the thing I do not like about it. Okay, so I had to deal with that. Then I boot everything, and Linux, you know, the Linux installation went very, you know, cleanly. Here it is. Everything's installed. I have, you know, LARBs running and stuff like that. Um, but the, there's one thing that did not work. Now, as I was installing this, you'll see I have an Ethernet uh, cord and, you know, plugged up to my router. That's why I'm in this puny little room I have. This is where I keep, like, all the junk. This is actually where I keep my old kid stuff. There's an old paper mache continent, imaginary land I made when I was a kid. This is, like, sort of the, where I keep all the... Uh, a bunch of old memorabilia, um, and I have my phone. Anyway, so uh, I brought it in here to have it connected to the Ethernet just to make it easier, but I realized that yet another thing about moder annoying modern computers is that a lot of Wi-Fi adapters are, of course, proprietary now. Now, in, in an old computer like this, n no one had the funny idea, I mean, basically any old machine you're going to get your Wi-Fi working, unless you're using one of those um, Linux distribution, I mean all of them are going to work basically out of the box, unless it's one of those old Linux, or not old Linux dis distributions, but one of the ones that's all free software. Um, that's the only thing you have to worry about, and if you're using a distribution like that, you already know how to deal with that, okay? You, you know what you're getting into, all right? In any other Linux install, you install it on this X220, or over here I have my uh, X60, which is even earlier. You install Linux on this, everything is going to work out of the box, okay? But now that we have all these proprietary, this proprietary firmware with Wi-Fi devices and stuff like that, getting the Wi-Fi to work on this, I still actually have not figured this out, okay? Here's the annoyance. Now, this isn't entirely, well, yes, it is entirely their problem, uh, but I was trying to compile the... In, in the AUR, there's a package that's supposed to fix it, and it's out of date, and so now I have to do this stuff manually. It's a big pain. But this is a pain that I should not have to be putting up with. And here's the thing. If you're a new user to Linux, what happens is you run into a problem like this, and you say, Linux is stupid. This also happens with people who have, um, you know, who use, like, NVIDIA drivers, okay? Um, because, but the problem ultimately is not about Linux. It's about the fact that people nowadays, basically in order to lock people in, will write these, you know, this proprietary firmware. You know, NVIDIA has special relationships with Microsoft or something like that. Um, and they will basically make it so it's impossible to, or at least very difficult for people to use this kind of stuff on Linux or something else. The thing about the Linux kernel, like in terms of one of the weirdest questions you get from like uh, new users to uh, Linux is they'll ask you like, how do you install drivers? Well... 99 times out of 100, you on Linux, there are no drivers, or, well, there are, basically, but they, they're already in the Linux kernel. You don't have to worry, it's always going to work, especially if you have a computer like this. Um, but if you have one of the, the things that usually go wrong, NVIDIA drivers and Wi-Fi, 
uh, on, but only on these modern computers. Um, and when I say modern, I mean things that came out in the past couple years. Now, this computer here, this X220, um, this, I want to say, came out in maybe 2012 or something like that. And computers of this period usually work pretty well. Again, this is, you know, before UEFI was super... I, I don't know if UEFI, UEFI didn't exist or, or what, but... It was before it was as prevalent as it is today. Nowadays, I feel like it's universal, I think. I, I'm not actually exactly sure, because I don't... I, I so rarely have computers like this, I can't even tell you. But this is the kind of frustration about it. And again, when you run into problems like this, if you're a, a newbie Linux user, if you when you run into them, they are automatically... You will interpret that as being the fault of Linux, okay? So... This is why people use ThinkPads in Linux. It's not actually because there's anything fantastic about ThinkPads. And yes, there are things, you know, people love the old keyboards. They are totally different. It's a pain to type on this garbage. I don't know why people have keyboards like that. But this is an aesthetic choice. Most people will prefer keyboards like this. They might look nastier. Um, and of course, this thing here, TrackPoint, will change your life. If you have one of these and you're not using them, use it. It will literally change your life. I don't know how to... I don't know how to, I, you will never use this thing. Like, the, I actually have this thing unplugged. I never use it. Um, so I only use the track point. But this is why people use ThinkPads. And this is why ThinkPads are not a meme. They are, I mean, just look at the thing. It's a, it's a box. It's ugly, okay? If you're a normie. Girls do not like computers that look like this. And that's a good sign. Because this is not about looking beautiful. It's about functionality. Everything, again, hard, the, the hard, uh, Hard drive, just one screw out. Everything, once you open this stuff up, everything basically clicks out. In here, you open it up, everything is right neck, right on top of everything. It, this thing has more room. It should be the thing that, you know, has more breathing room, but this is a much more, if you actually open it up, it's easier to use. All right, so this is why, this is the thing I'm complaining about in this video. So anyway, hopefully that made some things clear as why... Uh, again, I, I'm pretending this is an educational video. It's really just I'm mad at this stupid computer and all computers nowadays. This is why I don't use a computer that was made a couple years ago. Uh, I think the sweet spot, again, is, uh, you know, ThinkPad X220. That's a really common one. A lot of times people have ones a little before or a little after. But computers like this, they are fast enough to do everything you do. Uh, unless you're just doing hardcore video rendering. I mean, it can do that as well. It'll just take a little more time. Now, even, I will say, even computers like this, this is the X60. This can, you know, only take 32-bit operating systems. This is much slower, but if you're running Linux on it and you're careful, if you have a lightweight Linux distribution, this is fine for that as well. In fact, you can actually feel the difference between this and that. Like, this thing is sturdy. Like, you could literally knock someone out by just plopping them on the head with this thing. This thing is a fantastic computer. It is not... But it, it, this is more the X60, these older ones. These are more meme computers, to be honest. Uh, I, I would not recommend this to a normal person. Th things like the X220, the X... Or the X230, uh, maybe even the X200, which is a little slower, but still good. Not, not really that much slower than this. I would recommend these for normal people as well. They'll go on eBay for, you know, $150, maybe $200, sometimes less than $100. I think they used to be less than $100, and then I started memeing them real hard, and I feel like I actually increased the price. So get them now before they get more expensive. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to figure out the Wi-Fi on this. By the way, if you know, that, again, this is a HP ProBook... Uh, 450G6. If you know how to get Wi-Fi working on Arch Linux, you go ahead and tell me because, you know, save me some work. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.